Inside the mill, and here we're with Greg. Greg, uh, exactly what is your title here? And I'm the manager at Lanterman's oh, Mill, oh, the and uh, chief cook and bottle washer. So, uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, amazing mill here. This mill was built in 1845, and uh, it's the third mill to sit on this property. The first mill was put in in the 1700s, and it was put in by the surveyors for John Young, who founded Youngstown. And he, they had found this property when they were surveying it, and they wanted to put a mill in. That mill lasted until 1820, and then it either burned down, blew up, or was tore down, nobody really knows. The next mill went in in 1823, lasted until 1840, and went down the creek in a flood. And then this mill was built to last. It's 168 years old and still standing. So uh, and, and it, was, it was opened in 1845. No floods taking this out. You're talking about how wide the, the base of the building, the stone base is 10 foot wide at the base and it tapers to two foot where it meets this level, which is where the wood structure starts. And, and you were saying, how much of this was original? About 75% of the building is still original. That's it's amazing. quite amazing for a 168 year old building that that much is original. The, the mill was initially started as a grist mill. At, at some point it was also a sawmill. And then after it was closed, there's rumors that there was counterfeiting here and bootlegging and unsubstantiated, but of course, <laughs> makes for good stories. Now, now uh, the park acquired this with? In 1892. The park district was formed in 1891 the first park district in the state of Ohio, and this was the first building they acquired in 1892. And now it's it's fully restored. Fully restored to a working grist mill. We grind cornmeal, whole wheat flour, buckwheat flour. Had a little trouble this year with the wheel. We had to work on it, but uh, we hope to be grinding again next week. You had a little bit of trouble with the rain, too. You had, yeah, with the cooperation. <laughs> Without rain, our dam doesn't really hold water well, so we need rain so that we can actually draw water into the mill to make it function, because it's completely water powered. Well, why don't we go downstairs and see some of the work? Sounds great. Let's do it. Okay, we're now down just below the main floor, and we have part of the gears and the, the belts here. What do we have? We call this the gear floor. This is the machinery that actually drives the stones when we grind. These are the two vertical sh shafts go to each of our two mills. You know, the belt drives both sides of it. They're operated by a clutch. And the shaft over on this side here that comes all the way from the wheel and goes all the way to the attic, nine stories tall. It drives machinery on every floor as it goes through. And what all does it do on the other floors? On two floors up, it drives the bolting machines, which is another word for sifting. That's how they would have sifted the flour. And then up in the attic, there's various gearing that it's driving. Back when this mill was first opened, it was fully automated. One man could operate this entire mill by himself. The, the flour came down, or the grain came down from the attic, it was dumped into the hoppers, it was ground, and then it went, was carried back upstairs by little elevators, little cups. And then it was dumped down into the bolters and sifted, and then came back down to the main floor and was put in bags or barrels for distribution. So one man could run the whole mill. And amazing to think that in 1845, it was totally automated. That's amazing. And they thought it was it, Henry Ford. It's huh? a build this building with no tools, no excavators, no dozers, no nails. You know, just amazing what they were able to accomplish back then. Why don't we head downstairs to the next floor? Oh, that's, that. that's where it all, the water yeah. all takes place. That's the heart of the mill. Okay, we're down here now where everything happens. This is where the water comes in and moves the wheel, which powers everything. And, and exactly how, how does this work? This is the, the heart of the mill, the wheel. On the far end down there that you can see where the stone wall is, we bring the water into the building. It initially goes into a bypass and then goes right back out of the building. When we're ready to run the wheel, we close that bypass, which is essentially a trap door. And then behind this wood gate that we're looking at, we let the, a head build up behind it, about a foot of water. And then we open that gate just a little bit and down the penstock runs the water to run the wheel. It takes 15 gallons of water to get the wheel started, but after it's running, it only takes three gallons at a time to keep it spinning, which is not a lot of water. And both of those, both the, the, the wood gate and the bypass behind it, are controlled from the main floor. So once 
that outside gate was open that we looked at before, the miller could control all of that from the main floor. Like we were talking about, it's all automated. He never had to come down here at all. That's, that's absolutely amazing. It only takes, once it's going, three gallons of water. Three gallons of water to okay. keep it rolling. And once, how big is that wheel? This, the wheel is 14 foot tall and six foot wide, and it weighs four tons. And three gallons of water. Three okay. gallons at a time once it's spinning. Yeah, we really don't pour a lot of water on. When we grind, we run a little more water because you want to spin it a little faster, you know, to make up for the power you lose in turning the stone. But normally we'll spin it just so people can see it turn, you know, even when we're not grinding. And, and you still are grinding? Yes, we still grind today. And you do a lot or you do it for show or? We sell it in the gift shop. We also wholesale it to, to a local farm market uh, called White House Fruit Farms. And they sell quite a bit of it actually. Fantastic. Hey, I want to thank you so much for letting us in and showing us around. And now here we're here with Linda. Linda, what do you do here at the park? I'm the development and marketing director, which means I do all the fundraising and I do the marketing and public relations, things like this. So tell me a little bit about some general history of the park. park. Facts. The park was founded um, in 1891 by Volney Rogers. He was a local attorney and he a very, was a visionary really for that era. He was on horseback and discovered this gorge, actually where we're standing now, and wanted to have a place for the citizens of Youngstown to go where they could be refreshed, get clean air, um, relax, and have a real serene surroundings for them because at the time Youngstown was very industrial, it was dirty, the steel mills were going full force, so he wanted a place where the citizens could come, take in nature, and relax. And it was very unusual for that day and age. So he preserved the original 400 acres. It was Youngstown Township Park District for years and years. Um, it was funded by the attacks on the citizens of Youngstown. Well, as Youngstown shrunk, of course, the taxes were less and less. And in 1988, a uh, levy was put on the ballot to create a metropolitan park district, which is countywide now. It was passed, so January 1, 1989, we became a metropolitan park district funded by taxpayers in Mahoney County. Now, how big is this park? It's about 4,500 acres. We have lands, Mill Creek Park is the biggest piece at about 2,800, but we have nature preserves, natural areas, and we even have a park in Sebring now, which is in the western, western part of Mahoney County. And, and how is that in relation to, to other parks in other cities? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I know, you know, Cleveland Metro Parks is huge. It circles the entire city of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. we, we used to be, I think people still say we're the second largest park in the country. We are no longer. That was somewhere back in the 20s, I think. Okay. But we were the first park district in the state of Ohio. And the legislation that was used to create the Metropolitan Park District was some of the original language that Volney Rogers used back in the late 1800s when he created a, the park district designation. And what kind of promotions do you do here? We have just uh, something for everybody, from kids programs, a lot of it's free, kids programs, family events, we have tours of the mill, we have Fellows Riverside Gardens, which is a free public garden, there's kayaking, there's hiking, there's classes, there's health and fitness things like yoga and tai chi, pilates. I mean, it pretty much runs the gamut. We have coming up next weekend, uh, two big events, our Sunset at the Farm, which is at the Metro Parks Farm in Canfield, an old fashioned uh, get on a horse, hay ride, experience life on a farm, to a brand new event Sunday called the Green Cathedral Half Marathon 5K. And that will be at the Wick Recreation Area, which is our the area of the park where we have the most concentration of family and athletic activities. Well, it sounds like there's something for everybody. There so is. There really need, is. You need to get down here to Mill Creek Park. So. If you don't, call Linda if you don't know what to do. We won't, put your, we won't put your phone number out. Oh, that's okay. Oh, Visit well. our website, um, www.millcreekmetroparksworld.org, and um, you can sign up to get our calendar emailed to you every month, or just check out the online calendar and just see the real variety of things that we have here. Thank you so much. Thank you.